Hi, it's Chester Tuggle at Blue Pecan Computer Training. Uh, this is an Excel tutorial. Um, we're going to check if a cell contains one of many values. Now, I did a very similar uh, tutorial, Excel tutorial to this uh, a few days ago. Um, you'll find it on my channel and that involved uh, using an array formula. So if you didn't have Office 365, uh, you had to do Control Shift Enter. That will actually alleviate, this example will alleviate the need to do that. So it's potentially a bit superior uh, to that last example. But, okay, so what we want to do is find out whether these values here contain pan, KNI for knife or knives or chocolate. And we're going to use three different functions for this search is number and some product. So let's just go through these. So tend to build larger formulas kind of from the inside out. So uh, we'll start with search. And if you've not used it, basically it's going to return the position of a text value within a text value. So what we're trying to do here is say, do any of these values, and we need to fix that, appear within this text. Now normally you only supply one value that you're finding within the text, but we're supplying multiple values here. Okay, now I'm going to press, I'm going to uh, put in my close parenthesis and I'm going to press enter. Now, if you've got Office 365, it's going to do what I've done here, which is spill the results of the array down into the cells beneath. If you haven't got Office 365, probably not beneficial for you to press enter at this point. You probably just get a value error because it can't cope with the fact that it's returning an array of values. But this is quite useful for us to see that um, it's returned the position of pan, which is the first value that we're looking for, which is position 18 within that text string. But K and I and chocolate don't appear in that value at all. So we're getting value, value, which basically means it hasn't found a position because it's, it's not contained. Uh, think about it. If you haven't got Office 365, what you could do is select this and then press F9 on your keyboard and it will give you the same results but within the cell. Control Z to undo that. Okay, so that's good so far. Now, what we want to do, we're not really interested in the position. We're just interested in if there's a number because if there's a number, then it's found out. So we're going to use is number. Just to tell if it's if any of those results are a number. If I press enter, I get true, false, false. Now, um, that's basically because we had 18 and then value and value, and only the first, the first option, the first result was a number, which is why we get a true there. That's what we're interested in. Now, what I want to do is convert those, and you'll see why that's the case in a minute. I want to convert the true and falses to ones and zeros. And to do that, you just put two uh, minus signs in front of the formula. And now you get one, zero, zero. Again, if you haven't got Office 365, use the F9 trick. Okay, so now what I want to do is essentially add up those. So if we get a value greater than zero, we know that one of these values has been found in this text string. So to avoid having to create a, an array form of control shift enter, which is what I showed on a previous example, we're actually going to use um, some product, which can cope with arrays. The array is this bit, essentially. We don't normally specify an array in this argument of the search function. So I'm going to say some product, and I'll just put a close bracket there and press enter, and then I get my one, and you can see it's no longer spilling because some product can cope with the array in one cell. Okay, so I've got the one. Now, if I copy this down, you'll see it'll only give a one where there is a match, either knives or pan, there's no chocolate. But for example, if I change that to wine, I've got some wine down here, definitely ought to have some wine. Yeah, a wine cooler, which is currently zero. If I change that to wine, I get a one for wine cooler, so it's found it. So again, I'm not really interested in the ones and zeros. I want um, 
yes or no. So I can do a logical test. I can just say, is that value greater than zero? True. And then if I put that in an if, that becomes my logical test. And I can say uh, yes for my true result. And then nothing for my false result. So copy that down. And you can see where if it's found a match, it now says yes. So I'll leave that open for you so you can pause the video. You can see what we've done there. And that is basically all there is to it. I like that one probably more than I like the previous example I gave because I'm not having to use control shift to enter. All right, thanks very much for watching. Um, please subscribe if you find this type of thing useful. And I'll see you in the next video.